Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So let's start, we are talking about the one period model, consumption and leisure model and we have already examined to a certain extent, we have already specified the model, different agents in the model and we have also tried to look at the optimization condition and we were talking about the role of social planner which means that we are talking about the economic efficiency that whatever the competitive equilibrium that we have achieved, we have achieved whether it is socially efficient or not. So, for that purpose we had taken the help of the certain tools and mechanisms that we normally use in welfare economics. So, Pareto optimality condition and in, in order to make sure that we uh, whatever we have achieved the competitive equilibrium it remains efficient. We also have a, a, a new agent which is the social planner which means that it is basically the government which ensures that there is no exploitation uh, of the consumer by the firm and since the consumer is also the, the wage receiver which means that whatever market decides he or she has to accept. So, in that context we are trying to see and towards the end I think we had covered most of the part we are left with only few. So, the reference remains same the Stephen William, Williamson book and the Sanjay Chuk that we have referred. And we are now we were talking about uh, the optimality condition, and in that we mentioned in detail the, about the competitive equilibrium. So I think we had reached till here. So competitive equilibrium we have defined. So what is this condition? Let me give you a quick recap that we were assuming uh, competitive equilibrium in this context about this that marginal rate of leisure for consumption and marginal rate of uh, marginal rate of transformation of leisure for consumption is equal to marginal product of labor and which is also equivalent to wage rate. So, this is the condition that we have to achieve in case of Pareto optimality. So, we have already done that part and to certain extent. So, here first we have already achieved this, this uh, I would say criteria about the competitive equilibrium, so which means that the marginal rate of substitution for leisure for consumption and the, the marginal product of labor is equal to wage rate and this is what we are trying to and this the marginal product of labor can also be linked with the marginal rate of tra uh, transformation. So, once we have achieved this condition then we say that we have now reached to the competitive equilibrium. Now, for Pareto optimality, we have to now assume certain aspects about the Pareto optimality. So, for that aspect what is the third person that we are introducing into the model which is the social planner. So, how social planner would choose consumption and leisure to maximize the welfare of the consumer. So, for that what we are supposed to do is that we are trying to optimize again and for that reason we have the the maximum of C and L and then U C L. So, this is the utility that we have defined for the representative consumer and here we are also seeing that it is subject to Z F K H minus L which is the production function and the sum amount of the, the, in, uh, the output that goes to the government. So, this is equivalent to the tax that you can say. So, to solve this problem since it is focusing on the consumption and leisure, so the modus operandi remains same here not much change. So, here we have the Langrange multiplier of U C L plus lambda Z F K H minus L minus G minus C and then we are going for the first order condition. So, first order condition remains same the marginal utility if I am going for delta C, so del L upon del C. So, here we have the marginal utility of consumption minus the lambda that we have because it is minus 1. So, here we have 0 and then we go with respect to del L which is the leisure. So, this is what we get the expression which is the marginal utility of the increase in utility due to change in the leisure. So, this we are trying to see 
and here we have which means that the marginal utility that we have with respect to leisure and minus lambda which is z the first order condition that we have. So, here since we are con considering with L, so here, here we are putting with L here, so we are trying to see, so this will also be minus because this will come here and is equal to 0 and just to maintain the condition we are putting uh, del L upon del lambda, so which is this. Now, we solve in the same way that we have solved and we will be having the similar outcome here. So, if you are solving the equation 1 of the first order condition with respect to conjunction, so this comes out to be lambda is equal to marginal utility of conjunction C and L and if you just uh, substitute this here in this case then it becomes 0. If you go again for solving this then this is this expression can be written in this way which is the marginal utility of, of leisure for conjunction and then you have the marginal utility of conjunction. Uh, it is the multiplied by this marginal utility of labor and if you just go for further solution of this, so we are arriving at this condition. When I say that this condition, so here in this case it looks similar to competitive equilibrium. So here we have the welfare idea, so even with the condition of the Pareto optimality, we are achieving the same condition that we achieved in case of competitive equilibrium that shows that whatever competitive equilibrium they have to have achieved it is socially efficient also. So, that means that when you leave the market if it is a free market economy where the firms and labors are interacting in the same way uh, there is not much interference so both are our price taker or, or not the price decider. So, in that case this is what we are going to see. So, this uh, the Pareto optimality condition that we have achieved here, what is the meaning of this? Which means that the last equation that we have equation 3, it solves the Pareto optimality quantities both consumption and leisure and it is identical to the competitive equilibrium that we have achieved. So, we can now conclude that as I mentioned that the competitive equilibrium that we have achieved so far, it is almost having the it is fitting the criteria of social efficiency, but as I mentioned that in which all situations you have the failure of the competitive equilibrium becoming the socially efficient, you know first thing that we had mentioned about the externality condition when we have negative and positive externality and the market failure condition then in that situation it becomes really difficult to attain this. Second thing we mentioned about the proportional income tax, if the taxes are going to be imposed as a percentage of on the wage of the labor, then the labor is going to have the limited income and this will lead to uh, some compromise on consumption. So, this may not be efficient. The third thing is that if you are thinking about the market mechanism that we are mentioning here, that you have the market and in that market both factors the labor as a factor of production and the firm coming and interacting with each other and bargaining with each other. But here if you have a monopoly situation then this condition will not satisfy. So, the ultimate uh, the bottom line of this one period model is that with the help of the simple representation of the consumer firm and the government, we are trying to arrive at the macroeconomic condition and macroeconomic condition is about what? macroeconomic condition is that how labor is going to decide. So, here you have three things clear, one is that how you are going to decide about the role of the government. So, role of the government is clear that the role of the government is to collect the taxes and just make the expenditure and use that for expenditure. The second thing is that in which all situations when we say that we have increase in government then what happens to the consumption, so consumption, consumption decreases right and then you have a when you have consumption decreasing then your leisure is also decreasing because of the substitution and income effect dimensions. So, there also we are clear about the macro that with the increase in government expenditure it may not lead to a better outcome. Second, we discuss about the increase in productivity. So, what was the productivity increase? When we have the productivity increase then what it leads to increase in consumption, but leisure is having a some kind of uh, not very sure that whether leisure will increase or decrease. It may decrease also because some people may satisfy with the increased wage rate. So, as compared to the government expenditure increasing this leads to wage rate fall and this, this further creates a scenario for extra working hours in which in that case it is not very good. 
The third important thing is that we are bringing intervention by social planner. So once we have, uh, you, once we are bringing intervention by social planner into the condition that if you are leaving everything to the market, that whether the outcome from that market it is socially efficient, whether we can say that it is the the it fill, fulfills the criteria of economic efficiency, then that in this particular model that becomes easier to understand considering the externality, the proportional tax and market conditions keeping aside. So I hope uh, with this simple ex exposition of a uh, very simple context exposition of this model which I have mostly uh, taken, have adopted from the Williamson's. But uh, this particular idea gives you a complete uh, feel about the, the how the firms and the market and the consumers interact each other and how the socially efficient outcome can be achieved. Those of you who are doing it for the first time, I would urge you to go and read some more books and explore these models because if you are going for, if you want to understand the deeper context of the macroeconomics, then it is always good to explore these dimensions and try to link it at the macroeconomic picture. So I will stop uh, uh, here now for one period model. Now I will moving to the second period model. So in, in two period model, now we are going to see the two period model and in two period model, unlike the first period model, we had a very stringent condition that the representative consumer is not allowed to do anything in a dynamic fashion, which means that whatever he or she is getting as an income, he or she has to consume in that period not beyond that. So now we will be seeing the scenario where we have the intertemporal framework which means that the consumer will be interacting not in just in the current period but also in the future period. So here we will be just for the sake of simplicity you can go for infinite model that will be showing that I will also be showing uh, with uh, you with some examples. But in two period model it becomes really interesting and we will have the similar kind of dimensions over there also and then we will see that when we are restricting the individuals in only in one period then what were the condition and situations. When we are going to shift it to two period model then what we have the change in the behavior of these agents so there it becomes really important. In two period model basically we try to see the behavior of the representative consumer from the perspective of consumption and saving. So the moment I say intertemporal, so I have some amount of income, so I have got 100 rupees, I know that I will be living only for two periods, so I have one option that I can consume the whole 100 rupees in the current period itself or I save some amount for the next period. So I have 100 rupees, I may be consuming 40 rupees in the current period thinking about the future period that in future period also. Uh, I will have the opportunity to consume but beyond future period you have nothing. So second period is the terminal period. So this particular guy has to spend 60 rupees. Now what will be the incentive to save? So in macroeconomics we always think about the rate of interest as an opportunity cost of either consuming today more or saving it, it for the future. So if you have the rate of interest higher then it means that this particular representative consumer would like to save more for the future and less for the current period and in the same way uh, if you have uh, some kind of expectation that you are going to get higher income in future then you will also go for adjustment in the current period when you have a scenarios like what happens when you have a more income in the current period. So you have a lot of implications for what we see in macroeconomics what is called consumption theories. You have relative income hypothesis, you have permanent income hypothesis. So in permanent income hypothesis we assume that a particular consumer is having or particular agent is having a, a consumption behavior and he tries to streamline it through the, uh, the lifetime earnings and how he is going to have during the his life expectancy. So suppose your job is for 60 years but your life expectancy, the average life expectancy is around 75 years which means that you will be working for 60 years but your retirement age uh, but you are going to die after 10 to 15 years. So you will have to plan your uh, income and consumption in such a manner that even after retirement you have some amount of income left for the remaining period. 
So that has the uh, lot of implications in the macroeconomic dimension that when you have, whenever we have a tax increase, whenever we see uh, some kind of extra incentive given, then consumers react. One term which is very common and we often use is called consumption is smoothing. What is the consumption is smoothing when I say? Consumption is smoothing is called when you have certain scenarios, for example, if government, if suppose we are examining government and this particular government is having a role that if the government is going to increase the tax in the in the current period then how this particular consumer is going to react because in the current period if the tax is going to be increased then this particular individual will have some kind of uh, a compromise on consumption so how this particular in consumer will smooth out for the, till the future period so that becomes the part of consumption is smoothing process with the event of tax increase decrease. So, if the tax is going to decrease for instance, he is going to get extra income then how that is going to be uh, going to play a role in smoothing the consumption in these two periods. There are certain associated tools and techniques. So, like for example, uh, we use the concept of social planner. We also try to measure the that context in the intertemporal framework by introducing the concept of record and equivalence. So, there we try to see that with the adjustment in tax, whenever you have increase or decrease, how consumers are going to behave with their consumption pattern. So, that be becomes a really important uh, tool to examine and we will have also uh, in the two period model we will be seeing. The second thing is about the basic concept. So, for example, we have the macroeconomics one and in macroeconomics we study about the marginal propensity to consume and average propensity to consume that comes from the uh, Keynesian theory of consumption. So, marginal propensity to consume that how much you have change in consumption due to change in income. Now, if you try and see the in, in the intertemporal context with the help of the consumer with two period scenario that how much he is going to save and how much he will have. With that also you will have the clear cut understanding that whatever macro in macroeconomics we study the change in consumption due to change in income, we will have the simple or similar kind of derivation in the two period also and then we will be seeing that what actually determines the marginal possibility to consume whether just the income change or it is the behavioral change also. So, some kind of behavioral coefficient we will be introducing. In the same way we will be also seeing that what happens to consumption when there is a change in rate of interest, what happens to consumption when you have a future income change. So, marginal propensity to consume you will not be just seeing in the current period also you will be seeing with respect to future period of the income. So, then it in that context such analysis helps you to understand the, the macroeconomic theories in a more deeper way and then you can analyze those things and, uh, and have some kind of the spillover context in a larger way where you can have to decide about the, the consumption pattern at the economy level. So, let us get back to that. So, here we have the two period model of consumption and savings. So, in two period model here we have the, we as I mentioned I have given you the sufficient background. So, I think it is more than sufficient. Uh, here the we will have the same set of reference. So, here we have the Stephen D. Williamson. I have also referred a very good textbook which is, which has not yet been published. It is by Intermediate Macroeconomics by Eric Sims and this particular textbook is going to be very helpful especially those who are in senior undergraduate and the master level. So, this particular textbook is really good. Sanjay K. Chuk remains same the reference. So, we will also be having a similar kind of analysis. This particular book is freely available. So, if you want you can uh, download from the web page of Eric Sims and you can see and read those texts. The Williamson is having the recent edition, 6 editions so we have also referred that apart from the 5th edition. So, what will be the objective? As I mentioned, we will be defining working out with the agents in the two period model and how two period model helps understand the consumption behavior in the intertemporal framework. The second thing is the process of consumption is smoothing as I mentioned that when we have certain incidence of tax, how the representative agent is going to react whether it will be a simple that he will not be consume, he will not be saving at all or he will be having some incentive to compromise on current consumption and saving for the future. So, those dimensions we will try and see and then we will have the optimization condition in the two period case model. In the same way the competitive equilibrium we had the optimization condition. So, for the consumer the optimization condition uh, remains same when we have the 
maximization of utility. So, we always try and see that how the indifference curve and the budget line that we try to budget constraint that we try to define for the representative consumer, how both are tangent, how are these two conditions satisfy. So, tangency and the modulator of substitution is equal to the in this case it will be uh, simply the rate of interest, but normally we have the price ratios for the macroeconomic textbook if we have gone through. So, here we have the budget const constraint. So, in budget constraint we have the suppose we have a two period model, we are working with two period model. In two period model here we have the current period budget constraint. So, as I mentioned that uh, we have the representative household, this representative consumer lives for only two periods. So, in period 1 he gets some income, he is working and he gets some income. So, that will be similar to what we have seen in case of one period model. Now, we are also superimposing one more period that is the future period. So, current and future periods in both periods he will have some amount of income that we are representing by y t and y t plus 1. And since this particular guy is going to live for only two period. So, one opportunity that this particular person is having that he can go for saving in the current period, but because in future period it is a terminal period. So, in future period anyway this particular guy is going to die. So, it is better that he will be using it everything. So, there is no role of inheritance or anything that he cannot pass on to some someone who loves and, uh, and whom he or she loves. So, that is not a possibility here. The terminal period means the end of the period. So, whatever this representative consumer is having, he or she has to utilize. So, here we have the CT, the consumption in period T. So, first period, let us deal with the first period. CT plus here we have the saving. So, here we have the ST is equal to current period consumption. So, y, uh, current period income. So, it is, is YT. We are also assuming that this representative consumer also faces some kind of taxation which is of lump sum tax. So, some amount of tax, uh, some amount of income goes and as in tax. So, this y t minus t t, you can consider this as a disposable income. So, consumption in period t plus saving that amount of income that he has received, some amount of consumption. So, this is the income this is the expenditure side. So, you can say in, in nut cell. So, this is the disposable income, this disposable income is distributed in two parts, some amount of consumption, some amount of money is being used for consumption and the rest of the money it goes as a saving. Now, the consumer's future period budget constraint is this which is the future period C t plus 1 is equal to y t plus 1 minus t t plus 1 plus 1 plus r t s t. So, what is this uh, expression? It says that now we are looking for the future period consumption. So, future period consumption is what? Here we have y t plus 1 minus t t plus 1 right and plus here we have 1 plus r t s t. What is 1 plus r t? Whatever money that he is saving in the current period when it is being uh, move to future period. In future period this representative agent whatever will be the prevalent interest rate this representative consumer gets that income, gets that extra income and that becomes the interest income 1 plus R t. So, it is S t. So, C t plus 1 is equal to Y t plus 1 minus T t plus 1 plus 1 plus R t S t and this we can simplify this further. If we solve for S t here, right. So, what we are getting it is having C t plus 1 minus Y t plus 1 plus T t plus 1 upon 1 plus R t. So, the moment I have this ST is equal to CT plus 1 minus YT plus 1 plus TT plus 1 upon 1 plus RT, then it becomes uh, easier. Now, you can substitute this here, right. So, here what it says future period consumption is equal to disposable uh, future income that he is having plus the in interest earning that he is having on his first period saving. So, here it becomes easier. The right. So, here we are working out with what? Here we have uh, the C t plus 1 is equal to y t plus 1 minus t t plus 1. So, here these two will remain same. If I solve for s t here, so this is the expression, I can substitute this here. Why are we doing it? We are doing it because we want to now derive the, if we are assuming two period, current and future period, then we want to derive the lifetime budget constraint of this representative consumer that with the combination of first and two period, 
in the present value context how much he will be having the lifetime consumption and lifetime income because if you have to drive then it becomes easier. So then here we are substituting it back. So once I am substituting it back here the ST this expression here then it becomes CT plus CT plus 1 minus YT plus 1 plus TT plus 1 1 plus RT YT plus TT. Now we can simplify this further what we are getting is this part. So here it is CT plus CT plus 1 upon 1 plus RT and YT plus TT as YT minus TT plus here it becomes YT plus 1 minus TT plus 1 upon 1 plus RT. Now you will be seeing that the future values are in present value terms. Why? Because this particular present consumer has to decide in the current period itself. So about future if you are going to decide about what will be the expected value so that will be always in the present value terms. right? So, so here it will be this is the overall expenditure of this, this is the lifetime I would say consumption expenditure and this is the lifetime income of this representative consumer. So, we are able to drive with this simple transformation we are able to drive the two period model budget constraint of the representative consumer which is unlike the first period model only one period model it is much different. So, overall what we try to see is that the two period analysis makes us easier to understand the budget constraint. So, this is how it looks like. The simplified lifetime wealth and lifetime budget constraint will be this. This is the lifetime consumption expenditure and this is the lifetime income of the representative consumer. And with this we will be further superimposing the condition of the consumer's utility and then we will be trying to examine the condition that how this representative agent is going to play important role. I will be stopping it here. Thank you. Thank you so much.